Well, the news many have been waiting a long time to hear has dropped. There is a new Witcher game in development. We could probably talk all day about things we want to see in it, but let's try to agree on some stuff that we don't. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 things we don't want in Witcher 4. Starting out with number 10, and this is an obvious one, but uh, yeah. For it to run terribly on the previous generation of consoles whenever it comes out. We don't want another cyberpunk situation. Like, we've talked endlessly about all the problems that game had when it first launched back on November 9th, 2020. And one of the biggest and most embarrassing problems was how the game performed on the PS4 and Xbox One. Uh, keep in mind, too, those were the target console platforms for the game. There wasn't a PS5, Xbox Series version of the game available when it launched. Now, the game performed much better when those powerful consoles became the target consoles, but it took until February 15th, 2022 for an actual next-gen version of the game to be made available. Basically, they released a game that was meant to be a graphical powerhouse and a showcase for next-generation hardware, but yeah, the PS4 isn't that. You can't fully take advantage of that hardware. So for Witcher 4, just to be clear, whatever they end up calling it, we just hope that the game is made with next-gen hardware in mind. Like, it's entirely possible, and maybe even somewhat likely, PlayStation 6 and whatever Xbox thing comes next will be releasing around the time this game actually comes out. If that sounds far-fetched, remember that Cyberpunk was first announced in 2013, firmly in the late PS3, Xbox 360 era. Like, there's part of the game that alludes to Siri being in the Cyberpunk world. So we kind of just hope The Witcher 4, whenever it actually does come out, runs well on every console console they release it for. At the end of the day, it's a development planning issue and hopefully CD Projekt Red over the next however many years is able to sort itself out for this. At number 9, this is in a similar vein to the first point, but we hope you don't need a beast of a PC to run it. Like, we'd actually like it if the game managed to scale well on whatever hardware it comes out for. We don't want a crisis situation where a huge chunk of the PC gaming market is just unable to play the game because of steep requirements. Obviously, yes, we want the game to look good. In fact, we'd love it if it was one of the best looking games of all time. The Witcher 3 back when it came out was an absolute star. Honestly, it still is for a game that that old it, it's stunning to look at and even though cyberpunk was really buggy the art direction was fantastic pretty much all the time so we kind of really want to see what they do with witcher with a, a true upgrade in the graphics we do know that they're ditching their in-house engine and moving to unreal 5 which is both a good sign and perhaps a cause for concern now it's good because unreal engine 5 is a well-documented engine that a lot of people in the industry already know about and have used extensively it's also incredibly powerful and capable of putting out some truly next-gen stuff. We've talked about Nanite and Lumen about a hundred times on this channel at this point. The way that it's concerning is how much CD Projekt Red has pumped monetarily into its in-house development tools over the years. And like they really understand that stuff. I'm hoping they can adapt to a new engine quickly enough to spend the amount of time that they need to on the next game. Because we know Unreal is capable of doing anything they want to throw at it. It's kind of just up to CD Projekt Red staff to move over to the new engine. They're incredibly talented in terms of everything they do. It's just engine stuff. And if I'm honest, I think it'll probably work out. They got a long time to do it, and this is a decision Bethesda should have made about a decade ago. It's good that CD Projekt Red understands that, hey, if we move over to a well-documented engine that is just out the box, capable of doing everything we could possibly want it to do, and there's a development team making it so that it can handle next-gen stuff, so we don't have to actually be doing that, we just have to be making a game. Keep in mind, that's exactly what they had to do with Cyberpunk. They had to update their engine at the very same time they were making a game. Cyberpunk development was also CD Projekt Red's internal engine development. And if you want my complete take, I think this is going to be a positive development. I'm a big proponent of the Unreal Engine. It's super capable. We know it can be adjusted to work on just about anything. But once again, it's up to the developers to step up and give PC gamers the tools to properly adjust their graphics settings. So basically anyone can run the game, not just people with the newest and shiniest GPUs.
And number eight, we really hope there's no console exclusive content. This sort of thing's always annoying, just something we don't like seeing, like at all. It doesn't really matter what game it is or why certain content is exclusive to whatever console. It just sucks when a game's slifed up and given out to gamers piecemeal. Nobody likes a compromised game, and when you drop 60 or 70 bucks on a new game, you don't want to find out you can't play certain parts of it because you bought it on the wrong console. That's dumb. It's annoying. It forces people to tediously research what version of the game has all the parts they actually want. And in the end, it's basically up to the businessmen and not people who actually care about the game. Recent examples of this sort of thing includes the Spider-Man DLC for Marvel's Avengers, the timed exclusive for Destiny on PlayStation, and the exclusive mode that nobody played on Call of Duty Modern Warfare. None of these things are well-liked, and in fact, it killed a lot of players' enthusiasm. I don't think we even need to get into why making a multiplayer mode console exclusive is dumb. It seems to self-evidently be a terrible idea, I think. Even when console exclusive stuff is limited to a few cosmetics or a random weapon or whatever, and it's not that intrusive, it's still annoying. Do you remember retail exclusives? At least that seems to be pretty much dead, but I hope console exclusive content ends up going that direction. And number seven, no Geralt. Like, at this point, we know pretty much nothing about the next Witcher game. They've made a few statements about what to expect from the franchise in the past, like how Geralt won't be the star of new Witcher properties made by them, and that the game won't be called The Witcher 4. But all those statements are at least five years old at this point, and that Cyberpunk 2077 launch may have changed a lot of minds as to making fan-pleasing stuff. Like, still, it's probably safe to assume that Geralt won't be the star of this game, though. If that ends up being wrong, huge bonus, but don't set yourself up for disappointment. The tagline on the teaser says, A new saga begins. The medallion they've shown is clearly not Geralt's Wolf School medallion. Like, we assume that he's not going to be the main character of this game, but he should not be completely absent. This is, this is what they need to listen to. Geralt is kind of central to the story of The Witcher. He's the protagonist of all the books and short stories, and he's our viewpoint character into this world. He's been a huge part of the entire Witcher story, and it'd be strange for him not to appear at all. Of course, do we actually think he would be completely gone from the next game? No. Like, he'll probably have an important role, possibly not as the player character, though. Or maybe it's a new Geralt saga. I don't know. I would be perfectly fine with that. But a lot of people speculate that instead of Geralt, we'll be playing a Siri in this game, which seems pretty plausible. CD Projekt Red confirmed to Eurogamer it's not necessarily a cat school medallion. It's actually a lynx. So the Lynx school then. Now, where exactly that leads and if Siri has anything to do with that, we're not sure. But at least we know something about this new medallion now. It's pretty unlikely that there's going to be a Witcher game without Geralt. And that wouldn't feel right, would it? It's definitely something we don't want to see. At number six, a cyberpunk style launch. The last thing anyone wants. When Cyberpunk first came out, it was savaged online for how poorly it performed. Like, this thing was sluggish, it was buggy, it was everything you could throw at it in terms of negative words regarding its performance. There was still a lot to like about it, but it was a game that had so many problems that it actually did some damage to CD Projekt Red's reputation. So, for The Witcher 4, another bad launch is pretty much the last thing we want to see. The funny thing is, and I kind of think a lot of people have forgotten, but Witcher 3 had a pretty fair share of bugs when it first came out as well. Now, it was nowhere near the state that Cyberpunk was in at launch, but it wasn't great, and there was some backlash in the community at the time. I think there was a big difference in expectations. Witcher didn't have the same kind of expectations that Cyberpunk did, and they also managed to retain the goodwill by fixing those things quick. It took them a long time to do that with Cyberpunk. We're not really hoping for a bug-free Witcher 4 launch, to be honest. That's not a realistic hope. We'd love to see it, but this is not a CD Projekt Red specific issue. Games are complicated as hell to make. It's pretty much impossible to squash every bug before release because everybody has to eventually ship the game that they're spending money on working on. There is a difference though. Cyberpunk was just well past the line of being acceptable. Like it was rough and, and that was especially if you were playing it on consoles. The engine switch, I think, really makes it 
seem like the game's going to turn out better. It's obviously up to planners and studio heads with a clear vision and also a clear release plan. But the last thing we want to see is Witcher 4 with blurry box people in it. Number 5, I would not like to see this game loaded with microtransactions and DLC. You know exactly what we're talking about here. A Ubisoft style cash shop filled with cosmetics and other pointless crap that adds nothing to the game. In terms of DLC, The Witcher 3 is actually one of the all time best. They gave out tons of stuff for free that most developers would charge for and the add-ons that you paid for were huge. On top of that, they were fairly priced and contained some of the best stories in the entire game. So we have hopes that that's what CD Projekt Red goes for with Witcher 4. They didn't go out of control with Cyberpunk or anything either though. The DLC situation in that game is kind of anemic. There is not much DLC at all. For a developer that puts out such large games, there's still a relatively small studio, so I'm not sure they're really capable of cranking out non-stop DLC like Ubisoft would, especially if they're occupied with fixing bugs like they have been for the last couple years of Cyberpunk's existence. But who knows at this point? The game is years away, and who knows what they will do in the intervening years. Uh, nothing from the NFT world in Witcher 4, please. No one wants that. At number four, locked first person perspective. Like, okay, this one's kind of petty, but come on. It seems like everybody wanted some kind of third person perspective for Cyberpunk, but the best we ever got was being able to see our character in third person while riding a motorcycle. I think that with Witcher 4, it's unlikely that we won't have a third person camera given the type of combat that's in the game, but since we're talking about things we don't want, a locked first person perspective like Cyberpunk is among those things. It works for Cyberpunk because so much more ranged combat combat is in there but when we start talking about magic and casting spells and all the melee combat i just don't think it would work at least not in the way that makes the witcher series the witcher series so yeah only being able to see and it's not even out of the character creation thing in cyberpunk you could do a whole lot of customization to your character but you'd only see them in menus and in mirrors once in a while which is a strange choice whether we're playing a siri or Geralt, there's a lot of reasons why that wouldn't be a good idea now the best of both worlds would be rockstar style being able to switch between them on the fly but if we had to choose we'd much rather see third person there's basically no way the next witcher game isn't third person but we've also been wrong on stuff like this before so we just kind of want to reinforce this please do not pull a cyberpunk and lock us into first person view even if you thought it worked fine for cyberpunk and i do think it works fine for cyberpunk in terms of combat but we weren't always in combat were we we don't want that for witcher at all and number three, boring side content like in Cyberpunk. Okay, I know we're harping on Cyberpunk a lot here, but there is a lot of negativity surrounding that game, and I hope it's something that they address for Witcher 4. One of the biggest complaints about that game was how shallow most of the open world content was. The missions were kind of cookie cutter and basic and really didn't add a lot. Compare that to Witcher 3, which, yeah, had a few forgettable side activities, but was rich as hell in content. All of the side quests were stuff that I wouldn't even classify as side content it just technically was that it was at the same quality as any main story anything witcher 3 gave you side content that made you want to experience everything in the game and we want to see more of that instead of the cyberpunk more stuff is good philosophy now i think the switch to unreal engine bodes well for this particularly because as i said in a previous point switching to unreal engine means all they have to develop is the game they don't also have to develop the engine to keep up with everything that progresses in the gaming world as they're in the cycle of development which again is probably going to be at least five years but in all seriousness cyberpunk had a ton of dots on the map to explore but most of it was gang hideouts collectibles and stuff that i mean either didn't need to exist in the volume it appears in or possibly at all i mean did anyone actually do all of this i didn't not even a fraction of it hopefully the developers will remember why witcher 3 works so well and adjust their approach accordingly like some side jobs in cyberpunk were amazing but there are so many that ended up just being filler it was easy for players to get burnt out and miss the good stuff everything's got to be interesting and exciting so less of that
And number two is unaltered gameplay. Now, this might come off a little controversial, but we hope that with The Witcher 4, they actually take the time to update the game in a few ways. Like, we don't want an overhaul, and to be truthful, it wouldn't be terrible if it was just Witcher 3 but more. But there are some areas where the game can feel a little old-fashioned these days. Part of the problem is that so many open-world games have taken influence from Witcher 3, like Assassin's Creed Origins, Odyssey, Valhalla, even games like the Horizon series, and obviously they're not bad games, far from it. It's just that that formula has been seen so much at this point. Like, and especially when we're talking about the investigation stuff, like that aspect of the gameplay. When The Witcher first had you investigate things by looking around the area you're in, following trails, reading documents, that stuff felt really fresh, but it's in so many games now that it's become a bit obvious. One big step there is just make it more in depth, less hand holding, that type of thing. It would be nice if investigation was actually kind of a puzzle with you figuring things out rather than completing a checklist. Witcher 3 is still better than many of its copycats, but there's always room to try new things. And combat in Witcher 3 is good. It's just a little old. It's dated. And even back then, it got some complaints about being unresponsive and awkward at times. Complaints I ultimately agree with, especially in the console versions where it feels like the controller, particularly in the magic stuff, could have been mapped just a little bit better. And that doesn't mean Witcher 3 isn't a classic. It's genuinely one of the best RPGs, period. But there's no such thing as any work of art that couldn't be improved upon. And all people creating things get better at it. This is an opportunity to make what was great about Witcher 3 even greater. We don't want to see them pass on that. And number one, if they promise too much and under deliver. The absolute last thing we want. The hype train before the release of Cyberpunk was completely out of control. And while a lot of that came from people imagining a game in their heads that was never going to exist, the developers do deserve some of the blame for hyping that game to the moon and setting impossible expectations. I don't know if it was quite as bad as No Man's Sky. I mean, Cyberpunk was a tremendous disappointment, but the difference between the No Man's Sky that launched and the No Man's Sky that they had promised would launch was a bit bigger than the difference between what Cyberpunk was claiming to be and what it actually was. And a lot of the Cyberpunk disappointment came from the game being buggy as hell. But the fact that it's not obvious which one of these situations is bigger should say a lot. It was a bad idea for the studio heads to not deny things that weren't going to be in the game. They never outright lied about what was coming, I guess except for when they did. Well, regardless, I mean, every developer does a lot of hype stuff, but people try to keep expectations within the realm of what they're going to deliver, usually. And at a certain point, there was no way that this game could be what people wanted it. A lot of people expected GTA 5 and that level of experience set in a cyberpunk world, and in reality, what we got was kind of a stripped-down version of which three as a first person shooter and all that hype basically just set the game up to fail and that is not what we want for witcher 4 so don't go around promising stuff like wall running and multiplayer along with other random stuff they said in the game when it actually wasn't of course after all the public schlocking they got over cyberpunk i think it's safe to say they're gonna be a little more careful this time around we'll see but I think nobody wants to go through that twice in one lifetime. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to click the notification bell as well. All notifications, please. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. And we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.